I'm now to talk winners and losers on Wall Street. Financial expert Rob Black joining us as always to help us digest what we're seeing in the headlines here financially. And Rob, to get the conversation started, I checked oil prices globally. They're north of $120 a barrel and looks like the Dow's off by more than 500 points on this Monday morning. What are your thoughts? Last time gasoline and oil prices were this high was 2008. In 2008, well, two, two years ago, oil was zero. We should have stocked up then, huh? Mm -hmm. um, and last time it was $145 a barrel was 2008, I believe. And it took about five months for it to drop all the way to $35 a barrel. So maybe in five, six months from now, we'll have some tailwinds. Right now we have headwinds. There's a lot of safety in gold right now, $2,000 an ounce briefly over the weekend. Last time that was seen was September 2020 when we thought the pandemic was just going to never end. Year to date, the NASDAQ's down 14.9%, S&P 500's down 9%, the Dow's down 7.4%. So for some perspective, James, if you bought stocks in 2021, 2020, 2019, 2018, mm -hmm. you're up. But this year, you're down for the first two and a half months and it doesn't feel good. Oil's the problem. It's up 69 nine percent this year up to 127 dollars a barrel like you said and russia ukraine is going to hurt the semiconductor industry it's going to hit the automobile industry it's going to hit the jet fuel industry which is going to hit the hotel the leisure the travel the airlines um so it's it's a problem um and it's not going to go away until the war stops as far as headline yeah. news risk goes of note this mm -hmm. is light and this is fluffy but tesla ceo said you know we have the technology to change um stoplights from the tesla and if we did that we'd save a lot of money on oil and gas not waiting at stoplights if it could be done correctly so <laughs> that's your light and fluffy for a day of uh, doom and gloom so we could have a button in teslas that say make it green <laughs> something like that interesting so, okay well, we'll see if that actually materializes uh but you mentioned a moment ago jet fuel and how that's going to impact air travel and the cost of of uh, flights i know here at ground level gas prices have been going up it was one of the stories that we were focusing on today with our live reporters we're seeing gas prices really pushing record levels here in california and nationally too yeah four dollars and nine cents a gallon nationwide that is near a record of let me see i got my notes a little poorly written today of four dollars and eleven cents wow um so it's up 40 cents in the last week we feel it um i've got a electric vehicle that i'm like make sure you charge it overnight honey and use that cheap electricity because mm. i'm not paying at the pump um but the record of four dollars and eleven cents was hit in 2008 we'll probably knock that out this week gas buddy says gasoline is going to go to four and a quarter by may uh, California obviously has the highest gasoline prices because we also have the highest taxes. Um, it's interesting to note that this list is a lot of Pacific Northwest and an island nation Hawaii does that produce gas or refine gasoline. So that makes sense. Um, with that being said, this is a huge drag on the economy. Last time oil was this high, it broke. And, um, you know, it went right back down to the $80 a barrel. It's kind of Goldilocksian. Mm. 60 is a little too low on oil. 40 is definitely low. 80 is too high. So somewhere in that 60 to 70 range makes the most amount of sense. This should break, but it's not going to break until Putin goes away or until there's a resolution in this scenario. Interesting. All right. Well, let's end on a, a more pleasant note. Let's talk entertainment, Hollywood. Over the weekend, we had the Batman come out. I saw it. Uh, I enjoyed it. And I guess a lot of other people did, too, because it came in pretty big uh, for the weekend box office totals. Who did you drag to that torture fest? <laughs> my, both my kids. <laughs> Three hours. But we, oh. walked, we walked into that going, you know, that was kind of cool. That was a cool movie. It was a cool movie. Did any of you celebrate birthdays during the middle of the movie? Um, <laughs> It was Surprisingly, <laughs> though, you win and I lose. I'm making mm -hmm. fun of you, but, um, you know, it shows that there's a demand for movies and, and sequels in particular or any sort of franchise. The Batman pulled in $128 million. It's the number two movie of all time during the pandemic behind only Spider-Man. I, I think if you were to read between the lines, it's, it's people who are, you know, feel that they can beat COVID. It's typically not kids under eight who are going to movies. It's typically not people over 50 going to the movies. So it has to be that kind of really big tent pole event to get us out there. So um, it's nice to see. It's positive um, that the movie theater industry may survive the pandemic and, you know, figure out a formula to get us in for the, like the big events. So ultimately, I'm saying it's a reopening winner today in a market that's full of losers due to Russia and Ukraine. All right, a lot of big, big uh, tentpole movies coming out this year, too. We'll see if the theaters can hold on to that. All right, thank you very much, Rob, as always.
If you want Rob to answer some of your questions or talk about some of your concerns, let him know, and he'll do it right here. You can find him on Facebook, Twitter, email him directly, rob at robblack.com.